Hello everybody, this is Sporeman16, and for this video, I'm going to be talking about some Pokemon from Generation 4 that I have a liking for, which, which is, this is basically a continuation of a thing that I've been doing. Though this one I felt like was kind of a little bit overdue because between this and 3, there's basically all the stuff from like E3 and the Pokemon Sword and Shield stuff going on. And in my previous video talking about like the um the whole Sword and Shield National Dex Rigamaru going on. Which I'm just gonna say right now, I've pretty much gotten over it at this point. But anyway. To be talking about the first generation four Pokemon is well it's Drapion. So what is it about Drapion that I like? Well, first of all, he's a scorpion. And, well, scorpions are one of the few arachnids that I do have a liking for next to spiders. I mean, it's kind of a toss up which one I like better between spiders and scorpions. So, yeah. And taking a look at Drapion, he just really has an amazing design for being a scorpion. Because I would have thought that, the, that those arms would have been a little lower down. Like say on like they like said the mid part of his neck, but it's cool that they placed him like right on the sides of his head, and he just has a really just awesome design. I mean I know I've said that like numerous numerous times throughout my throughout my past three generations that I say I like the design to first top it off because well that's just it. I just love these designs. And well, Generation 4 didn't really disappoint with the designs. And Drapion, well, he's definitely one of them. Now, to be, to be talking about Drapion competitively, well, he's not exactly the greatest, but at least he's not like complete garbage. Because, well, basically, how I've been able to know about the battle prowess of these Pokemon is through the, through the ways of Smogon, not through VGC. So basically looking at Drapion's stats, he does have he does have a good defense in base 110, having a decent a decent attack stat in base 90, and a fairly decent base 95 speed. Though with his abilities in battle armor, battle armor, keen eye, and sniper. Basically, with Battle Armor, Drapion cannot be hit by crits. With Keen Eye, it prevents other Pokemon from lowering his accuracy. And Drapion ignores all tar targets' evasion um, stat, or stat changes. Basically meaning you can't lower his accuracy and he will still hit you despite your, your increased evasiveness. And basically with Sniper, if Drapion strikes you with a crit, the damage is multiplied by 1.5 times. So, he doesn't exactly have the worst abilities. And I mean, he does have some sets like in like a like a choice band set and a swords dance set and all that. So basically saying he's not completely and utterly terrible, but he's not exactly the greatest for being a poison dark type. Even though I have heard from a few people saying that Drapion should have stayed above above Poison type. I mean, I know I've heard people giving out their commentaries of why Drapion is part of Bug type, so yeah. I mean, do I mind Drapion being a Poison Dark type? No, I don't mind at all. Should he have been a Poison Bug type? Not really. So yeah, that's basically how it is with me and Drapion. I just love the design. His battle prowess is not the worst in the world. And I really do feel like he does deserve his typing of Boys of Dark. Now, for Shiny Drapion... I can kind of say Shiny Drapion is a bit of a disappointment. I say a bit. Because what they did with Drapion is basically giving him a more reddish tint to his color. Basically like what they did with Skaroopy, but the, the red was much more saturated on Skaroopy. But with Drapion, it's duller. 
I mean, it's still enough of a difference that I can still tell that it's a shiny Drapion. But, it, again, it's just a bit of a disappointment. But, it's still alright nonetheless. So, that's all I can really say about Drapion. Cool design. Dece fair, like, an okay battle prowess. And the shiny is alright, but they could have made the red a bit more saturated like with Skaroopy. But overall, I just I just love Drapion because of the fact that he is an awesome looking Scorpion Pokemon. Anyway, next Pokemon to be talking about is a Pokemon that evolved from a previous generation Pokemon, which is in the case of Electabuzz. So yep, I'm going to talk about Electivire. First of all, as I pretty much stated, design really awesome. They basically did this right for an Electabuzz evolution. Cause it's just basically Electabuzz just man, he he just went to the stinging gym. Cause you see those arms. And he doesn't fall under the case of really big arms, stubby little legs, because <laughs> those are some decent sized legs he has there. Yeah, I just really love Electivire's design. Now, to be talking about Electivire competitively, though, well, let's just say he had quite the history in competitive play. Because in his debut generation, he he was like he was like really up there with the big dogs. Because for one, um, Electivire only has one ability in that of a motor drive in his debut generation, which is basically if he gets hit by an electric move, he speeds up. And basically he pretty much takes no damage. And with Electivire's attack being base 123 is really good. And the fact of so many moves that he could be able to learn, like he has like cross chop, like the element the elemental punches and so many other moves that he could learn. It was just that good. But the, unf the really unfortunate thing for me when it comes to Electivire is how throughout the generations went on, Electivire just... He just fell off the competitive map. And I feel a bit sorry for him. Because you just look at him and he is just looking like he was just bound for competitive greatness. I mean, he was in his debut generation, but then he, as as from like black and white and on, t between his debut generation to pretty much Ultra Sun and Moon, he just kept dropping and dropping to the point where, by smoke on standards, he's basically irrelevant to the competitive meta. Like, yeah, basically, sh basically, what I'm looking at is that he has gotten so bad he's not even worth being in the PU tier. He, he's become so bad that he has become irrelevant to the smoke on meta. Basically listed as untiered. And that's what makes me feel rather sad about Electivire. I mean, yeah, people can still use Electivire to his greatness. But it's just that by smoke on standards, he, he just plain sucks. But I would still give Electivire a, ch Electivire a chance if I was given that. Because he has a good attack stat, and the rest of his stats are not the worst. Because, I mean, yeah, with that motor drive, man, he could really speed it up. I mean, yeah, he got a secondary ability in Vital Spirit, meaning that Electivire can't fall asleep. And basically gaining this ability would help cure his sleepness or whatever. But, yeah... That's the thing about Electivire. He looks great, he battles great, but Smogun says, no, he sucks by today's standards. But I say no. But anyway, we're talking about shiny Electivire. I say this was pretty good. Basically taking the yellow, all that bright yellow, and giving it like like a bit of like a like a dark-ish orange tone to it was really nice. 
and taking the red from his eyes and the tip ends of his tail and making them a, like, um, I guess like I'll call it a sky blue color was really nice. So yeah, overall, I really love Electivire. And honestly, I also kind of give it props to, um, in the anime, when Paul's Electivire came around, he was a really good battler, I will give him that. But yeah, overall, again, really love Electivire. He was definitely one of the really good designed evolutions for past generation Pokemon in Gen 4. And yeah, he's just really pretty much my overall favorite. With another one in particular, which actually will be later on in this list. Or, and by later on, I'm talking about the next one. And that would actually be Rhyperior. Yep, Electivire and Rhyperior are like my all-time favorite um, evolution of past generation Pokemon. Because, as y'all would have seen in my talk of Gen 1 Pokemon that I like when I mentioned Rhydon, well, I just love his evolution even more. So, Rhyperior. Oh man, this Pokemon just screams, I am a goddamn rock monster, and y'all shall fear me. Well, at least that's what his design pretty much says. Because, I mean, seriously, look at the design of this thing. This design, it just says that he can be able to take hits and dish them back really stinking hard. And he has that somewhat intimidating look on his, on his face. And not to mention that when you see those those holes in his palms, he, he can shoot Geodudes from those. <laughs> that's crazy. But when talking about Rhyperior competitively, he's not as bad as you think. Because his attack, his his physical stats are, oh man! Base 140 attack, base 130 defense, base 115 HP, and unfortunately his special stats and speed are bleh. But really, what can you expect from a Pokemon like Rhyperior? He's not—he's not going to be nowhere near good in the special department. And yeah, he definitely his designs definitely shows that he is slow, very slow, base forty slow. And when when it comes to his abilities, there's really no doubt about it. If I were to be using a Rhyperior competitively, I'm definitely giving him the solid rock ability. Because this is a really good ability on a Rhyperior. Because Solid Rock Rhyperior is meaning that Rhyperior only receives three-fourths the damage from super effective attacks. Or, unless, unless you want to go all Reckless Rhyperior, where with Reckless, uh, Rhyperior's attack, if Rhyperior is basically using an attack that does recoil or crash damage, their, their power the power is multiplied by 1.2 times. But I think the same also applies to the recoil damage as, itself as well. And honestly, it just kind of baffles me that they give Rhyperior Lightning Rod for his ability. Which is basically, all electric attacks are drawn to him, raising his special attack by one stage, and basically taking no damage from the electric attack. It's like, what was the point of giving him that ability when he's already immune to electric for being a ground type? I think it's probably most likely because of because of that one part in the anime like way back ago when Ash was fighting Blaine and basically knowing that the that the electric moves weren't doing any good on Rhydon and Ash pretty much said aim for the horn and basically did damage which let, let's, let's be honest here, that was just straight up stupid that they, that they just had to go with that. And I guess that's the whole reason why, like, Rhydon and Rhyperior have these abilities. But yeah, honestly, just just give, just make sure that your Rhyperior has solid, solid rock and you're good. Because yeah, Rhydon is just that, is just the personification of I can take physical hits really well, and I can hit you really, really damn hard. 
So yeah. Now when talking about Shiny Rhyperior, I'm not saying that Shiny Rhyperior is a bad Shiny, it's just more of an interesting choice of colors. Because we all remember that Shiny Rhydon was a bit, was basically looking more like a sand color, like beige. Well, on Rhyperior, they dulled it down, and all the reddish orange parts on his body have been changed into a bright yellow. Which is really, is really not a bad decision, but it's not exactly the, not, not exactly a good decision. And yeah, I really feel like they could have done a little better. I don't know how, but overall, Shiny Rhyperior is not utterly terrible, but it's not the greatest either. But yeah, overall, with Rhyperior, he is just an utter physical wrecking machine. <laughs> Hence why at the end of his tail looks like a wrecking ball. So yeah, if I wanted to use Rhyperior on a team, I would do it. Just gotta make sure that I don't put him up against any water types. <laughs> anyway, moving on, the next Pokemon that I want to be talking about from Sinnoh is, well, Luxray. Now, Luxray, I have a liking for Luxray more or less in its design than anything else. Now, taking into Luxray's design, I definitely love it. Given like the big old spiky haired mane, and the fact that he does have that really intimidating look going on, and the fact of all that black fur that he has going on is just amazing. The ears, well, considering the fact that they're all big and round, I mean, they're not over exaggerated ears, because thanks to that mane, it, it kind of evens it out. <laughs> yeah, just just loving it. Now, when talking about Luxray competitively, well, the fact that he's more of a physical electric attacker is rather interesting. And having the abilities of Guts Intimidate or Rivalry, well, I would I would say give it either like Guts or Intimidate, but Probably more or less people will probably want to run Intimidate Luxray because, let's all be honest here, Intimidate is like one of the best abilities ever. <laughs> yeah, because th thanks to thanks to a certain little wrestling fire cat who gained that ability, <laughs> he became one of the one of the top mons in um, um, VGC Worlds um, a little a little a little, a little while back ago. Because the fact that that certain little fire kitty was in five of the top eight teams in Masters. Intimidate is just that damn good. And basically with Guts is that, well, if Luxray has a major status condition, his attack is multiplied by 1.5 times. And basically if Luxray does get burned, the Guts ability would prevent his attack from being decreased. And well, basically with Rivalry is that, well, Luxray's attack um, have the power to be multiplied by 1 point, 1.25 times against a target of the same gender, or just multiplied by 0 0.75 times against a target of the opposite gender. But yeah, it's either just Guts or Intimidate. Because Luxray has a base 120 attack, which is really good, and the rest of his stats are rather... average. Minus, like, say, Special Attack in 95. But yeah, basically by smoke on standards, Luxray sucks. Do I say he sucks? No. This is basically what smoke on saying because, well, Luxray is basically with Electivire in the untiered list. Saying that Luxray is just completely irrelevant to the smoke on meta. I mean, I could I could mention something about Smogon's tiering system. But I'm just gonna say it right here, right here now. Smogun's tiering system is garbage. I mean, it's just, it's just putrid garbage. Because basically, basing or basically tearing a Pokemon for how much it is used rather than how good it actually is is, it's just dumb. 
All right, mini rant aside. Basically, Luxray is a really awesome um, physical electric attacking Pokemon. Even though some people I've heard saying that Luxray should have been an electric dark type. Basically saying because of the amount of dark type moves it, it, it learns and apparently the fact that it, it just has a lot of black fur. I'm sorry, but that really doesn't do Luxray ju enough justice to make it a part dark type. It would have been cool if he would have been an electric dark type, but it is what it is. And that's all I have to say about that. Now, when talking about shiny Luxray, whew, Lu basically, Game Freak made the right choice of taking Luxray, taking all the light blue it has, and making it a very pure, bright yellow color, which really emphasizes up on the electric typing. And that's all I can say. Luxray was a really good it has a really damn good shiny and if I if I can hunt for for it or its pre-evolved forms I definitely would oh wait I can in the electric type friend safari in in my Y version I can simply do that so give me but yeah overall I love Rux Luxray mainly for its design and its shiny its power prowess not so much and that's all I have to say. Moving on to the next little Pokemon in line is, well, yet another electric type. And is also a Pokemon that has evolved from a previous generation Pokemon. And thus it is another Gen 1 Pokemon. And that is basically Magneton's evolved form, Magnezone. <laughs> oh man, oh man. What can I say about Magnezone? First of all... He is possibly one of my favorite electric types. Because for one, Magnezone is a really good special attacker. Because looking at it by Smogun's Ultra Sun and Moon standards, he is still OU. With having 115 defense and 130 special attack. How good is that? And if anybody was to be running a Magnezone, I would see it more likely as being either the abilities of Magnapole or Sturdy. Because with Analytic, it is basically the power of Magnezone's moves is multiplied by 1.3 if it is the last move in a turn. So, yeah. And basically with Magnapole, basically... Steel types can't escape. Which I have heard it was a really good thing that um, Magneton had back in like Gen 3 where, where it trapped Skarmory and just zapped it and just zapped it out of the air. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he still kinda holds that role today. I'm not sure. And basically basically having Sturdy is well, again, to be mentioned, just a basically focus sash as an ability. Cause I mean, seriously. With how good Magnezone is competitively, it, it's just so amazing. In fact, I actually use I actually used Magnezone in my first playthrough of, of a Moon version. Even though it was mostly a Magneton, ever since I caught it as a Magnemite, because the only problem that I had was that I had to wait until I get until I got to the last stinking island, which was Pony Island, and evolved Magneton to Magnezone there. But honestly, it was definitely worth the wait. To where I could get a really good special attacker. And just looking at Magnezone's design was just was just genius. Basically taking Magneton for what it is, and instead the, just the, the Magneton just being just stuck together they are fully merged together to make it look like like a really like a like a sentient UFO with magnets it's just amazing and that's all I can say now when talking about shiny magnezone 
it's, well, basically what I would have expected it to look like. Basically, the, um, the bluish, the bluish metal colors now become more like true metal colors in more of like a, like a very light silverish blue color. Um, and taking the red eye in the center and making it, making it a bright blue color was just very nice. And, and I just love it. And the fact that the um, antenna on, on his head is actually just a duller, just a duller lighter um, yellow color, and I do believe that the magnets are also lighter colored too. So yeah, it's basically what I would have expected um, a shiny electric steel type to look like. So yeah, overall, I really love Magnazone, one of my favorite electric types, and really quite possibly my my absolute favorite electric type because of how good of a special attacker he can be. And again, just a really good design to an evolution of a Gen 1 Pokemon that really needed the evolution. So, anyway, moving on to the next Pokemon line. This one might surprise you people, raise eyebrows, or turn heads. And this is one of the two legendary Pokemon that I'm going to talk about. And the first legendary that I'm going to be talking about that I have a good liking for is the King of the Regis, Regigigas. Now, what can I say about Regigigas? First of all, loving the name, Regigigas. It's just showing that he is large and in charge. And the design of Regigigas is just, oh wow. Basically what I kind of would have expected the King of the Red Eyes to look like. Just having like these really big arms, somewhat stubby legs, and having the fact that he has a little bit of nature on him with the moss on his, um, on his feet and shoulders. And the fact that he, actu that he actually has a little hinting that he is the King of the Red Eyes because of the spots on his chest Right, right on the sides of his face. Where, where you basically got red, blue, and gray, which is basically representing a red rock, ice, and steel. And I also just appreciate all the black markings on his body. I mean, overall, I just love the entire design of Red Gigas. But here's the thing when it comes to Red Gigas competitively. You take a look at his stats. His stats are just amazing. 110 HP, 110 defense, special attack of 80, special defense of 110, speed of 100, and attack of 160! 160 attack! That's just insanely high attack stat! So yeah, Regigigas' stats are just amazing! But here's the thing about Regigigas that nobody likes at all, me included, is basically Regigigas' biggest crippling hindrance, his ability. His ability is slow start. Basically, when Regigigas comes into battle, his attack and speed are cut in half for five turns. Yes, five turns. It's basically like slacking, but worse. Because at least with slacking, he he can get to attack like every two turns with his full strength. Richie Gigas, he can't be able to do that for five turns. But. If you put Regigigas into a double battle and find the means to create like somewhat of a team to work around um, Slow Start and basically unshackle Regigigas from the Slow Start, oh boy, will he be able to wreck so many freaking bases and destroy so many, so many souls. But that, that's just an over exaggerated statement. But basically, if you find the means to unshackle Regigigas from Slow Start, 
then you got yourself a monster. Because you now gave him the 100 speed and the 160 attack. It's like basically just hit him with like skill swap or gastracid. Or just let him hit a cough Grigus. In some way. That's all I can really say if you're wanting to use Raging Gigas competitively. Put him in a double battle. Do not put him in a single battle. Or, yeah. That's all I can say. Now, for talking about shiny Raging Gigas, I would like to say that, that shiny Raging Gigas to me, I like it more than regular Raging Gigas. Because, I mean, it's only a single change where it's basically... The yellow parts of his body get changed into like like this purplish blue color, and it's just that one little change where I just like Reggie Gigas' shiny even more because I feel like the color just works with him. I know some people would have disagreed with that, but he can't really change my mind on that. And that's all I can really say. And there is one more other thing that I do want to mention about Reggie Gigas that I love so stinking much. When it comes to his Pokedex entries, which I usually don't want to bring up about because I'm basically that kind of person who really doesn't take much of Pokedex entries seriously, especially when it comes to the creepy, scary stuff. What they say about Reggie Gigas is just astounding. Just showing that Regigigas just has unadulterated raw strength. That it says that Regigigas can be able to tow continents, I repeat, continents with just ropes. That's insane strength. I could have put, I, I could kind of give Regigigas my own kind of record of world's strongest Pokemon in terms of raw strength alone. And we actually got a chance to see some of that in like sort of like the anime. Or basically in the movie Giratina and the Sky Warrior. At least I think it was. Yeah, it was Giratina and the Sky Warrior. Like, yeah, basically Giratina's movie. Where basically Reggie Gigas along with the aid of, of a, like a herd of mammal swine, was able to hold back an absolutely massive glacier. Even to the point where Reggie Gigas even used a little bit of extra power to actually push the glacier back a few feet. And it was a big, massive, moving glacier. Reggie Gigas, your, your raw strength is just plain insane. So overall, I really like Regigigas, whereas a lot of other people don't. But I do. I love Regigigas for everything it has, minus its ability, because its ability is just bleh. Because why do that? And overall, yeah, Regigigas is just a cool legendary to me, regardless of what anyone else says about it negatively. So anyway, moving on to... The next Pokemon in line is, well, I guess you could say pretty much another normal type, but on the much smaller side size of things. And, well, it's actually the final evolved form of the early game bird. And that would be Staraptor. So, what can I say about Staraptor? Well, for one, I can kind of pretty much say that Staraptor was like the best starter or the best final evolve form for an early game bird. Because when talking about Staraptor, for one, he has a, he, I guess you can say he kind of has a bit of an edgy design. I guess it's probably because of that, that little, that little blade-like crest thing on his head. And the fact of just having the name of Staraptor is just amazing. And, well, I just made a one to say that I really do like birds. Especially the bigger ones. Because birds just do the one thing that I always dream of doing. And it's just fly. I don't care how, but I just, 
I just always just want to always just want to fly. Whether it just be like in a helicopter or or a commercial airplane. I just want to fly. But anyway, we're talking about Star Raptor competitively. He's he's pretty good. Basically having 100 speed and 120 120 attack is really good. And the fact that he is pretty much well, I guess with his abilities, he he's pretty much in the group of what's what I'll just call the Intimidators, because well, Star Raptor does have Intimidate for his main ability and Reckless for his hidden. And in terms of what Smogon says about him, well, he's not bad, because there is one thing about Star Raptor competitively that I really do like, and a lot of others do. Star Raptor can learn close combat. Yeah. Close combat. On a final of all form of the early game bird. How crazy is that? And that just what made me love Star Raptor so much. It's just the fact of seeing a bird do close combat. And there actually have been depictions in the anime of how he did it because of when Ash owned Star Raptor. That in some cases he just did it with his wings, but I would have seen it more that he just does it with his feet. That would that would just be even cooler. So yeah, Star Raptor competitively he's good. Though Talonflame kind of came in and just kind of stole that thunder away from Star Raptor. Cause yeah, <laughs> Talonflame with um Gale, Gale Wings, Brave Bird. Eh. I still find Star Raptor cooler because, yeah, Burn learning close combat. <laughs> anyway, now, Shiny Star Raptor, it's not that bad. Basically, taking the black feathers and making them more of like a brown color, and then taking the red marking on the head crest and making it a bright blue color. That's not bad. Do I feel like they could have done better? Maybe. But thankfully, they didn't do worse. And that's all I can really say. That when it comes to Star Raptor, really love this bird, being able to learn close combat, and having a decent enough shiny to boot. So, that's all I can say about Star Raptor. He's just awesome. Anyway, we are now coming to the end here. So, the next Pokemon that I want to talk about is, well... I'm just saying it straightforward, our Pokemon God. Yep, I really like Arceus. Now, now granted how I pronounced his name right there, I, I'm just going to say this right here. Yes, I know that my pronunciation of Arceus is wrong, and I know that its official pronunciation is Arceus, but... I pronounce it as Arceus because it just sounds better to me, okay? So don't don't hate on me for this. Okay. So Arceus. Our Pokemon God. Oh boy, where do I even begin? Well, first of all, design-wise, I absolutely just love it. Because this is basically what I would have expected Poke God to look like. Especially the fact of the, um, the ring around his body. And just overall, it's just a design that I really have no complaints about. Now, Arceus competitively? Pretty much what you would expect the God of Pokemon to be like in battle. Because he basically has 120 across the whole board and having the ability known as multi-type. Where, where basically, if Arceus was to hold a plate, like say, the Dread Plate, he becomes a Dark Type. Give him a Draco Plate, he becomes a Dragon Type. Give him any, any type of typing plate, he becomes that type. And not only that, whatever type he becomes, his signature move, Judgment, becomes that type too. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, there is one little thing about Arceus that disappoints me. Is that, um, 
I do believe it was in either Diamond Pearl or Platinum that there was plans to have this RC's event where you're using the item known as the Azure Flute. Where you basically take the Azure Flute to Spirit Pillar and basically right in front of the entrance of Spirit Pillar you would play the Azure Flute um, spawn up a staircase that would lead up to a crystal platform and at the end of it you would be able to fight Arceus at level 80. But Game Freak never released that event anywhere. Not even Japan got it. And the reasoning why they didn't they didn't do didn't release this Azure Flute Arceus event is because they think it would be too confusing for players. And I find that to be rather ridiculous. Now, now the thing of it is, there is something that I am just going to say right here. Um, back a few years ago, during the during the time like like some time after um, Platinum came out, I was actually able to find the means to hack the Azure Flute into um, Platinum and did the RCS event because really that's really the only way you could be able to do the RCS event in Platinum is to hack in the Azure Flute which which is what I did and actually fought Arceus and I do believe I did capture him now there is one other thing about Arceus I want to talk about and well I guess you can say I guess you could say, well, rant incoming. Arceus is just an absolutely hated legendary. Why? For basically what he is. And, and I find that to be extremely ridiculous. That people are deciding to hate on Arceus just for what he is. For being the Pokemon God. Saying that he's like, like, like one... One common complaint is that he's overpowered. No, he's not. I mean, if we were given the chance to actually raise an Arceus at a certain level, like, say, 60 or 70, we could be able to train Arceus to be any role that we want. Like, be like a like a bulky physical attacker. We could do it. We could have been able to do it. Or, like, a mixed sweeper. Could have done it. A tank. Could have done it. Um, a speedy, a speedy physical, bulky attacker. I don't know. We could have done it. Though, granted, we were able to do something like that in um, Gen Seven with um, Silvali, or, or basically, as I pronounce it, Silvali. We, we, we basically have was essentially just bootleg Arceus. But yeah. And trust me, the hatred for Arceus just goes even deeper when people are just are pretty much still to this day debating between the fight between Arceus and Mewtwo. And people are more siding towards Mewtwo. And I mean, yes, I know Mewtwo is really stinking strong, but without him mega evolving into either Mega. Mega Mewtwo X or Y, Arceus is still stronger. And the fact if if we were to put Mewtwo versus Arceus into like say an anime movie, Arceus would still pretty much have the upper hand. Because as we saw in Arceus' movie, Arceus and the Jewel of Life, he can be able to change types at will at any given time. So basically meaning if like Mewtwo fired off a psychic type attack, he could just turn to a dark type and be immune from the psychic attack. Or if he wanted to shoot a focus blast, he could just he could become like a flying type and take and take resist, resistant damage from the focus blast. He could do that. But trust me, I could try I mean, I seriously want to defend Arceus if you were to fight against Mewtwo. But I really do not want to start a freaking comment war on this video. That's the last thing that I want. And if for some unfortunate reason that I did start a comment war between Mewtwo and Arceus, 
I'm I'm just gonna straight up end it by just not saying anything. But yeah. Also the other thing of it is that people are just poking fun at Arceus's design, basically saying that he's just nothing more than a llama that got stuck in a fence and the fence broke off and became that ring around his around his waist. Like, come on guys, seriously. I just wish the people of the Pokemon community could understand that Arceus is the one true only god of Pokemon. No one else. Even if yes, we we have we have Pokemon in the franchise that are statistically stronger than him, but you just really can't When it comes to the Pokemon who are statistically stronger than Arceus, that doesn't really make you God. Seriously. It's just been described in basically the games, the NPCs in the games, the movie, and, and, and almost everything else that Arceus is, is the true God of Pokemon and nothing else. <laughs> yeah, especially no stinking little red flopping fish, and especially not a certain little fossil that people are praising. Cause I mean, <laughs> but I think I've rambled on enough about people just absolutely despising Arceus for what he is, and knowing that he's like one of the most underrated legendaries of all time, and possibly the most overhated legendary of all time. And all that. I don't want to rant on anymore. All I'm saying is, I'm one of those people who actually likes Arceus for what he is, for what he does, for how versatile he could be if we were able to catch one and raise one. But again, we have Silverly for that, in a way. And overall, I like his design, I like the ring that he has around his waist. And nobody, and I mean absolutely nobody, is going to change my mind otherwise. Arceus is an awesome god Pokemon, and I really wish you people could just accept that, but more than likely you guys won't. But that's all I have to say. So, now that I'm done with all that ranting, now to be moving on to the second last Pokemon in line, which is, well... If y'all would have seen from the last three is, well, well, I guess I can probably say it was only the last two generations of Generation 2 and 3 where I talked about the pseudo-legendary of that region and how much I liked it. Well, in Gen 4, it's, it's not going to change because, yep, I officially love Garchomp. And, <laughs> oh man, Garchomp, you really are something. Gus for one, and pretty much as as pretty much predicted, design. Oh my God, we have a freaking land shark. Well, I guess more specifically saying hammerhead shark, but it's still a land shark nonetheless. Cause you just look at that design, and he is just he is just an absolute beast. Because you, you don't want to catch those claws. You really don't. And one of the interesting things about Garchomp is that due to those fins on his hands and the fin on his back, he's able to fly. And the fact that he could be able to fly at speeds to that of, of, a, of like a military jet. That's just... That's just fast. And well, his stats don't lie either. Because when looking at Garchomp's stats, his stats are overall just really, really good. Because he has 102 speed, 130 attack, 95 defense, 80 special attack, and 85 special defense. That is nothing to sneeze at, or to be taken lightly. And the fact that Garchomp also has some good abilities in Rough Skin and Sand Veil, but most likely most I would see most people wanting to run Rough Skin. Because basically, with Garchomp having Rough Skin, 
if you make contact with him, you're losing one eighth of your of your HP. Round down too. And what basically we're saying, Vale, if a sandstorm is active, Dark Charm's evasiveness is multiplied by 1.25 times. And of course, with, with Dark Charm being a part ground type, he will not be taking damage from sandstorms. And yeah. And we're talking about Garchomp in his debut generation. Oh man, what an impact he gave in his debut generation. So stinking good, he got banned. And even then, he can still be quite a threat, even in Ubers. And the fact that he, along with Zapdos, were just really, were just really good partners. Because as I mentioned in uh, my Gen One video, when I talked about Zapdos. Was, was basically like the, the Zap Chomp. Basically, Garchomp and Zapdos would be able to be immune from each other's field fielding it or basically field attacks. Zapdos does just dis, does discharge. Garchomp would be completely safe because of being part ground type. And Garchomp can use Earthquake and Zapdos wouldn't have to worry because of being a part flying type and flying types are immune to ground moves. Seriously. Garchomp and Zapdos just went hand in hand when they were paired together. And I loved it. Just my favorite legendary from Gen 1 and my and the coolest pseudo legendary in Gen in Gen 4 just teaming together. Now Now when it comes to the pseudo legendaries, I know I mentioned that Metagross, well, I guess I didn't specifically say that, that Metagross is my favorite pseudo legendary, but I'm not saying that Metagross is the best pseudo legendary because, well, this is where I basically say Garchomp has that title. Because I honestly do feel like that Garchomp is like the best pseudo legendary ever. Until, like, if, if Gen 8, if Generation 8 has like an even better pseudo legendary than Garchomp. But I don't know if, if Game Freak could be able to make another pseudo-legendary that could beat out the likes of Garchomp, because he's just that good. Now, Garchomp, basically, um, with him, he was actually one of the few Gen 4 Pokemon to gain a Mega Evolution. Now, here's what I will say when it comes to Mega Garchomp. I really feel like the only reason why Mega Garchomp came to be was because he is a true fan favorite. Now, what they did with him f to make Mega Garchomp was not exactly the best decision. The fact of taking 10 points off of speed and giving a big boost into his attack stack to going from 130 to 170 because I mean that is crazy high attack stats and basically going from 95 defense to 115 defense but in special attack going from 80 to 120 I mean that's good and all but the fact that you took 10 points off his speed yeah the, 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 the fans didn't like that and the fact that Mega Garchomp's ability is Sand Force, where basically, if a Sandstorm is active, um, Garchomp's Ground, Rock, or Steel moves have their power boosted by 1.3. But it's just... Nobody really, really likes using Mega Garchomp. And this is where I will pretty much say that Garchomp was just one of those Pokemon that I really felt like didn't really need a Mega Evolution. Now, what I will say is that the, des the design for Mega Garchomp is really, really effing awesome. Because, I mean, basically having having big scythe blades for hands is really cool. And the fact of having, like, like, like this really manly chin going on and having these broad shoulder protrusions was all nice and dandy. But that's the only thing I could say about Mega Garchomp that I like is the fact of his design. And in fact, here's the thing. When it comes to Garchomp, people are still are still one or basically still wanting to use regular Garchomp over Mega Garchomp. Because even though both regular and Mega Garchomp are in OU. 
but people still want to run Rayquan Garchomp because he was already good as is. And not to mention, when Garchomp debuted, he was basically the star Pokemon to, in my opinion, the greatest champion of all stinking time, Cynthia. I mean, seriously. I had to come up with a strategy just to defeat Cynthia's Garchomp. And that was basically grabbing a Float Soul, teach it Rain Dance because it had the Swift Swim ability, use Rain Dance on the first turn to where Swift Swim would activate and I would be able to go faster than Garchomp and teach my Float Soul Ice Fang. Because with Garchomp being Dragon Ground type, Quad Weak to Ice. That was basically my strategy to defeat the likes of Cynthia's Garchomp. Even though on my first attempt, I actually lost to Cynthia, not by her Garchomp, but by her Lucario. Because her Lucario was her last Pokemon, and I was down to my last Pokemon. And basically, I lost because just like I thought the last move that I hit on Lucario was going to knock it out, but it literally survived with 1 HP and knocked out, knocked out my last Pokemon, and basically I lost. That was, that was definitely heartbreaking, but yeah. Garchomp, really awesome Pokemon, really awesome pseudo-legendary. I would definitely use him on a team if I ever wanted to make one. And Game Freak made a good choice of letting the champion have this absolutely beast of a, of a land shark Pokemon as her star. And that's all I can say about Garchomp. But, when talking about shiny Garchomp, uh, Garchomp was one of those Pokemon that fell under the category of its shiny is almost the same as its original colors. But this is something that I will say. Yes, shiny Garchomp is a massive disappointment, but he is actually my favorite out of the out of that type of shiny. Because nowadays I can actually be able to tell if it is a regular Garchomp or a shiny Garchomp. It's basically the the on the front chest part of his body. If it's more if it's red in color, then it's a regular. Whereas in for shiny Garchomp, it's more of an orange color. And everything else besides the yellow parts are basically dulled down. And it does make Garchomp look a little better, but they definitely would have gone better. And in fact, I actually came up with my own version of Shiny Garchomp. And you will most likely see a picture right now of what I came up with. And what it's basically is, my idea for Shiny Garchomp is basically giving him more, more colors to what he is based off of, a shark. In this case, I went with the Great White Shark, even though Garchomp is more of a hammerhead shark. I basically just gave him, basically gave him like a gray, a gray top with with the with the um, the abdomen part being that of of a lighter like a lighter gray color to almost a white color, and the yellow parts remain the same, along with the eyes, and basically just dubbed it the Great White Chomp. And probably most likely you people are seeing this and most likely would have agreed that this still would have been better than the official Shiny Garchomp. Now, they did make up for it a bit when it came to a Shiny Mega Garchomp, but Shiny Mega Garchomp fell under the category of the Pink Shinies. But honestly, I haven't really heard much of any complaints about Shiny Mega Garchomp. But for me, it's it's really one of those pink shinies that I really don't actually have a liking for. I mean, again, they could have gone with like the shark colors, but that's just me. But anyway, yeah. Overall, Garchomp, really awesome Pokemon. If you want to use him for a team, <laughs> he will not disappoint at all. Anyway, 
Now to be talking about the last Pokemon in line, which is basically my starter of choice. And well, surprise, surprise, the trend of picking the water starter officially ended, ended here. Because my, my starter for choice for Gen 4 is, well, Torterra. Yeah, I bet you people are probably thinking that I was going to pick Infernape, right? Well, no. I'm pi I picked Torterra. Now, why did I pick Torterra? Well, first off, um, he is like one of the coolest looking turtle Pokemon I've ever seen. It's almost kind of basically like if Bowser went completely, completely vegetarian. I guess you could basically say Torterra is basically um, vegan Bowser. And well, they did a good job at it. Because basically, Torterra is just like, he's just like an entire little world wrapped up into one Pokemon. In fact, Torterra's design is actually based on the world turtle. Which is basically, which is basically, um, what, is, what was described in the mythology is that, that, like, the entire world rested on the back of a giant turtle. And Torterra is basically like that because you see within on a shell, you see this big old tree. Like you basically imagine a shell, like sort of like a background sort of thing. Like you basically have the landscape, a tree in the foreground, and the spikes on the other side of a shell are supposed to represent like mountains off in the distance. And in fact, it has been described that that's that that very small Pokemon can rest and even make their homes on Torterra's back. Because the fact that he's just that big. And yeah, I just really love the design of Torterra. Now, Torterra competitively, well, I would pretty much say that Torterra feels rather comfortable where he is competitively. Because he has base 109 attack, 105 defense, and, well, yeah, he's a freaking turtle, so, yeah, he he was expected to be slow. And, of course, his his main ability is basically, like, what every other grass starter has, which is overgrow, but his hidden ability is that of shell armor, which is basically meaning you, <laughs> you ain't critting Torterra if he has shell armor. You ain't critting him. But the one, one of the biggest downsides to Torterra is the fact with him being a grass ground type, yep, Torterra just says hello to a big quad weakness to ice, and also having the weakness to bug, fire, and flying, but with being a part of ground type, he has the immunity to electric, even though if he would have just stayed a pure grass type, he would have had the resistance anyways. But yeah, basically Torterra is the case of I have some really good physical stats, and I'm slow as molasses. But yeah, when, when I basically played um, Pearl version, because well, for some reason I know we never had a copy of Diamond, and really actually, I was only able to play Pearl version because a cousin of mine actually had a physical copy of Pearl that he just didn't want to play anymore. And when he came over to visit one day, he just he just basically asked me if I wanted it, and I just went with yeah. So that's how I was able to get my my how I was able to get a copy of Pearl version, which is long gone by now. And yeah, he was also pretty much my starter of choice when I played Platinum. Though weirdly enough, when I played Platinum the first time, I didn't fully complete the game. I think I, I think I decided to only go as far as basically capturing Giratina. I, I didn't, I didn't take on the Elite Four or Cynthia. I just didn't complete the game. I don't know why, but if I were to play Platinum again, I would do it. I would actually, you know, play the game entirely and challenge Cynthia and beat her. But yeah, basically. Torterra is just a really cool grass ground type, despite his his big ice weakness. Love the design of, of basically being the Pokemon equivalent of the World Turtle. 
and just overall love it. And to basically wrap this video up, to be talking about Shiny Torterra, I really felt like they they did good enough by basically um, taking the green on his body and making it more slightly, like a basically a slightly, okay, not a slightly, but basically a brighter green color, and then taking the the brown parts of his body, tree and shell included. And making them like a yellowish green color, kind of like what they did with um, Groudon when they when they made his shiny. And I will say this isn't bad. In fact, I actually like it. And really, I actually like Shiny Torterra more than regular Torterra. And that's all I can say. It's just a really good shiny in my eyes. Even though Torterra would, I guess, in a way, fall under the case of green shinies. I I haven't really heard anybody complain about the shiny Torterra because maybe he's actually in the case of the people's eyes actually a good green shiny but I don't know but yeah overall I love Torterra and if I were to play a gen 4 game again whether it be like the original gen 4 games or whenever Diamond and Pearl get their remakes I'm just gonna pick Turtwig again now, one just one little last thing that I will say that when it came to the stars of Gen 4, it was actually hard to decide between um, Peplub, Chimchar, Turtwig. Because nowadays, it would be hard for me to decide between between their final of all forms because all their final of all forms are just really good. Because Empoleon being an Emperor Penguin with having a part steel typing and Primitive Inferno being a really awesome looking monkey and being a mixed sweeper. That's all I can really say. But, again, I would just pick Torterra. Or unless I just decide I want to go with a different challenge and go with either Empoleon or Inferno, but I don't know. But, but for right now, I'm just going to stick with Torterra. Because he's a really cool turtle, and that's all I can say. So, that will pretty much do it for talking about well, pretty much Gen Gen 4 Pokemon that I have a really good liking for, whether it be just for just like one or two reasons or for multiple other reasons. And I also do want to apologize for this video being so stinking long, and and also for the last one too. It's just that it's kind of hard for me to you know try and boil things down um, as short as I can on entries because I just want to get my details out. So, yeah, I I'm sorry for this video being, like, over an hour long. But, yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and whenever I decide to do Gen 5, well, that's just for me to decide. And, let me tell you, it's going to be, I feel like it's going to be a bit harder to choose, like, 10 or so Pokemon from Gen 5 that I like, because there's, like, so much in Gen 5. But, yeah. I'll be seeing you guys whenever I decide to do the Gen 5 video or if something else comes up before then. So, see you guys then.